We've arrived at Chitwood Dam with new life. Look at that. Some new blacksmith lapwing chicks and I reckon these are very, very young. Maybe only a few days old. I actually don't know if I've seen little chicks this young before because even the ones we saw at Treehouse Dam didn't have as much mottling, that sort of brown colour on them. Uh, they, they were sort of more black already. But look at that, really long legs, big feet. Definitely hasn't grown into its body and I've seen two so far and we're on the most eastern corner of Chitwa Dam. Definitely the rooms that I'd like to stay in if I were to ever stay at this lodge. But look at that, they're able to run around and catch all sorts of things within the first couple of hours of their life. It doesn't take them too much, it's usually just waiting for the feathers to dry before they get to their feet and uh, well start walking around testing those legs. It almost looks a little bit wobbly still. There's the other one. Oh my word, can you go back to a little bit to the right? There we go. Just uh, by that stick, there's actually another one sitting down just there. There it goes. Just got up. There's another two. So there's three of them. Oh, how exciting. So I think it's quite easy to say that uh, typically blacksmith lapwings have or well, lay between three and four eggs. Whether all of them will make it, I'm not sure, uh, too sure. The ones at Treehouse Dam seem to be doing very well, doing a good job at hiding, of course. You can hear that this adult has panicked and it has grown another pair of legs now. But that's just one of the little chicks going under to keep nice and warm. So it just shows you how young they actually are. Oh, look at this. There we go. Come on, you can fit. Go on under. I'm trying to find and <laughs> get underneath all those feathers. Sibling, move over. Oh, this is very precious. It's okay, don't worry, we're not going to hurt you. We're not very close to these animals either, so we must be about 30 meters or so away from them. I think mom is just on the pan, or dad is on the panicked side, pure purely because they're that young. They really are only a few days old. Now, Kat, you're wondering if birds have good eyesight. Most certainly they do. Typically a bird like a, a blacksmith lapwing that lives down on the ground. You know, it's got to watch out for predators. Uh, and then also they're looking for little insects around. So I think that their, their eyesight is fairly good. I think just in general with birds, uh, their eyesight has to be quite good. Their sense of smell uh, is not sort of as well developed uh, uh, as it is with the, the cats and some of the other mammals. Uh, but that's all right. They've got other things that they can, of course, rely on. Hearing is not too bad either, but I think I think the blacksmith and the lapwing is predominantly relying on, on its eyesight. Uh, maybe something like a, I'm just trying to think, what else would use sense of smell? Maybe some of the probers, maybe they're using sense of smell slightly, but again, they've also got sensory nerves in their bill that help detect their food where they can't see it. But what an amazing sighting. I really am enjoying seeing all these young animals. This is a very exciting time of year, of course. <laughs> Ladies and daisies, you said quick under the mombrella. That's hilarious. I might have to steal that and add that uh, to my list of things. So thank you very much. That's very cool. I like that. And of course, you can imagine uh, it's not just the birds here. Well, where's the third one though? I think the third one has run for cover. I don't know if it managed to get a spot under there because I can only see six legs now. So adult and then of course the two of the youngsters. Otherwise, it would have just sat down somewhere, just trying to keep out of the way. But it's okay, I promise you, we won't hurt you. But mom, we, oh, mom or dad, we can't move though because there's gremlins around here. And there's Egyptian geese, there's three Egyptian geese just sitting in the water in front of one of the rooms. Yeah, they're not quite floating at the moment. They actually just look like they're standing in the shallows. Oh, that's even very, very pretty. Look at that. The Egyptian goose tucked its head underneath the water. And because they've got a special oily secretion that waterproofs their feathers, no problem. It just goes straight off of it, off of the feathers, not leaving any dampness. Now, Laurie, you've said that you absolutely love Chitwa Dam. I do too. You could sit here for hours and hours. There's so many different things to talk about. Uh, what I was really hoping to see, though, I'm a little bit sad, is I thought that we were maybe going to get a view of the the greenback herons because they're really fun to sit and watch but I haven't seen any around here maybe they've taken refuge and again like a lot of the birds will be uh, just under some vegetation and then as that Egyptian goose sort of swims in a westerly direction towards the sunset we should get a view 
of a pod of hippos. And it seems like the main family and that are here. You can see a couple of them with their bodies submerged, but they all seem to be scattered around at the moment. And this is normally the time, of course, we know that this is when they get active. This is the best time to come down to the dam because they'll start opening their mouths, they'll start calling, and it is, uh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, I, I imagine, though, for the guests that have never been to Africa, it must be quite daunting at night listening to the hippos, listening to all the birds, and the same thing, you know, throughout the day. It must be quite loud. As I know, and I, we, we often talk about this, some of the complaints we've had and, and when you get the rainy season, or actually just when it gets warmer, and the frog life <laughs> comes alive again. The chorus that you must get from this dam at night, I think really could be overwhelming. And well, we can't turn the sounds of nature off, I'm afraid, and it would take you, definitely take you a couple of days to adjust to something like this. But what a, what a way uh, to sort of get away from uh, sirens and hooters oh there we go hello hippo opening your mouth um, and they're moving to well natural sounds I think it is is much better although a lot of us are accustomed to the sounds of traffic and just the city noises and like I said when you hear hippos fighting too, the males it sounds like dinosaurs how great is this where's our little friends there should be three young hippo calves around here the one that did open its mouth, I think, was a sub-adult. It wasn't quite fully grown just yet, but I haven't seen any of the little heads popping out. But I'm sure they'll eventually, they'll eventually come around. Who's going to sing first? Obviously, the lapwing is still going. The Egyptian goose has started chattering. But when is the hippo going to make a noise? Well, there's a couple of animals also coming down to drink. There's a beautiful Inyala bull just to the left of the hippos. It's just sort of standing behind a tree. A little bit further left, there we go. It's about to come out now, just underneath the, the sort of wall of Chitwa. And that's where the main lodge is situated up there. I'm not sure if the, that's where the pool is. Um, I haven't actually been to Chitwa Lodge. And there's the hippo strand. Uh, you can just see that wire. That's just to try and keep the elephants and the buffalo and the hippos out. It doesn't always work, though. They often find a way, and especially now coming into winter, they want to eat all the nice lush green vegetation. And as you can imagine, a lot of the lodges actually water the plants uh, in and around the lodge, so they stay l lush. You'll find lots of warthogs will actually go up and graze right near the lodge, too. And there's a, it was a dispute. One of my favorite things to watch in a hole, it sends you so quick, that's fantastic. And watching the blacksmith lapwings and the three banded plovers chase each other. They really do not like one another. And they're both exceptionally territorial, but they don't stand for it. And it's sometimes actually quite hard to get onto camera. There it goes again. Wee! <laughs> I love that posture. You can see straight away when a blacksmith lapwing is not having any of uh, uh, the three banded plovers nonsense, tucking its head right down, sort of opening its wings and then charging over and ending up in, in a flight. The very quick birds as well. You know, they don't waste any time. There you go. Who else do you chase? You just chased a drongo away. Yeah, they're not happy with anyone. There's some more three banded plovers. Maybe it's got a nest around. Uh, obviously, we've seen. No, no, that's maybe some youngsters. There's some more juvenile. Oh, there we go. Look, tucking under another one. So, two more, three more juvenile or little chicks of the blacksmith lapwings. That's quite cool. Isn't that wonderful? No, but did you say birdhead Tom or redhead Tom? Sorry, Alice. Did, oh, deadhead Tom, you've said that this drive has been filled with cuteness. It has indeed. We're very lucky. Uh, it's going to be quite sad, though, to watch these little ones grow up. I can't imagine that all of them are going to make it uh, to adulthood. It's just the, the unfortunate reality. As much as I'd love for all of them uh, to reach adulthood, uh, the chances of that, especially with the fish eagles and things around, well, it's quite slim, actually. But while they're this age, only a couple of days old, they're really going to be hanging around close to mom and dad, trying to keep nice and warm, especially on a cold day like today. Otherwise, you'll see them on the edge of the water instead of looking for food. I mean, they don't seem to mind the Egyptian geese too much either. It's quite cool, though. The birding has been quite wonderful this afternoon. I'm just having a scan to see if I can find anybody else that's interesting that's perhaps trying to catch... Oh, what's that? 
in the tree. I think it's a gymno gene. Uh, sort of in line with this room. Let me try. I don't think I can get over there. Uh, you see that very green tree? No, no, go to the right. No, no, hang on. Sh let me go to the right a bit more. In there. In that, that spot there. There we go. Who's sitting there? Ooh, sneaky. There we go. Gymnogene, an African harrier hawk. Just hiding about, doing exactly what I said, catching the last of the afternoon rays. It's cold. It'll be very nice. It's all fluffed up, preening itself. And it's lucky it hasn't actually been spotted by anybody just yet because none of the birds are really sort of overreacting. I haven't seen any drongos going in there mobbing. Normally the Egyptian geese are ones to let off a uh, sort of call of distress. We did see some Egyptian geese goslings yesterday too. And that's exactly what this bird would be going after. It would go after these blacksmith lapwing chicks too, but it's a very small meal for a raptor of this size. So whether it would bother uh, bother with going after them, not sure unless it was maybe desperate. But definitely those Egyptian geese goslings, uh, they adults have got to be very careful with that because they would, well, this bird would find that a very nice meal. Also, they are able to stick their legs into the holes of trees and dig around quite nicely. And we know that there's lots and lots of birds around here, especially the buffalo weavers, and they make those massive nests. So quite a few thorns and things. So it might be a little bit difficult, um, but with all the dead knob thorns and things, there'll be lots of cavities, natural cavities, or things that woodpeckers have uh, sort of pecked away at, barbets living in those trees, and they'll be going for their chicks. Very cool, though. I know there's a couple of you that often request to see the gymnogenes that are around here. Ryeza, you said that was well spotted. Thank you very much. I actually thought it was going to be an owl. I, got it. I thought we were going to have an owl day today. Isn't that amazing? There's some of the rooms of the luxurious Chitwa Lodge. Beautiful setup here. Isn't that great? But we're going to move around now, and in order for us to move around... Oh, actually, you know what? Before we move around, Senzo, shall we sh show everybody the beautiful sunset? Because I don't know if Tristan's got a view of the sunset. He's been with the leopards. So let's quickly appreciate this view. It is a very uh, nice setting with, of course, the marula trees that have lost their leaves. And then, of course, that, that, oh, it's so amazing just about to lose the sun but I'm gonna send you back across to Tristan while we maneuver around to find those African fish eagles and other things that could be lurking around the dam <laughs> 